Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. Ask me anything, it's a prison ask me anything. We got a lot of emails and a lot of questions on this. So I thought I would answer some and bring some light to some stuff. Cause you know I'm gonna tell it like it is, good, bad, or indifference. But you know all my say, please, before you get started, please check out our member program on uh, Patreon. We have a bunch of different levels. And also check it out on YouTube. Please check out our action crew. I got something coming up really good. And also, please subscribe if you haven't passed the word. We're trying to plan something for a million subscribers, and you guys are all part of it. So I really want to uh, thank you guys for that. I'm in a good mood lately. Uh, I want to really thank everybody for the support of my car accident. I flipped my 5,000-pound Tundra truck. So put it this way, I'm a very lucky man. And, uh, you know, I look at that as my lease on life. And I want to give you guys more information. So let's get right into this. This will be fun. First question. If you're in a low security prison, is it really that bad? Well, first I was never in a low, low security prison. Uh, but lows, you know, lows have the double, the double fences. Lows uh, are different in the fact they'll have dormitory style living. Now, when you're in a medium or a high security prison, that doesn't happen. You have two to a cell. Some prisons you get lucky, you'll have one to a cell. Very rarely because it's so crowded, but you will get one at a time or there'll be a corner cell that'll they'll put somebody, a head orderly, something of that nature. But no, there are two men to a cell in mediums and, and highs. In a low, it's dormitory. Well, what does that mean? That means it's who wants to live like that, that the bathrooms are pretty open. You don't get privacy as much as you do in a private cell. Uh, you, you, when you're in a medium or high, you have your own toilet in your cell. So yeah, you shit in front of somebody, you use the bathroom and stuff, but you can literally close the door. Uh, you know, they say you can't do it, but we used to put a towel over the window so you had privacy in there, if you want to call it that. Uh, and guys would give you that, that pr they'd know, hey man, the guy's using the bathroom, don't go in there. Now in a low, and I know a lot, of, they still have double fences, meaning like there's a fence, and then another 10 feet, there's another tall barbed wire fences and all of that kind of stuff. Some of them have towers, uh, but not, they don't have towers manned. There might be corner towers, they call them, but they do have roving guards. So they'll have two guys in trucks 24 hours a day going around that prison, totally. And all they're doing is in a truck, just patrolling, 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 24 seven. Uh, as far as inside the prison, you do get people with a lot of time. You'll get guys with 20 year sentences, 30 year sentences in a low. And what happens is a guy who's got done a lot of time already and he's proved not to be too much of a, a bad inmate will work down to a low security prison. Me, I was always getting in trouble. But they will work down to a low security prison. And sure enough, I mean, you know, I could tell you this right now, uh, that trouble can happen in a low security prison. But by no means is it like a medium or a high. Forget it. Highs are, uh, is where the real trouble starts. So I hope I kind of answered that. Next question. Do you have prison habits, i.e. making your bed every morning, that you do even though you are not in prison anymore? Oh my God, what a great question. I did something today and it clicked in me that I still do this. And I don't know if people on the street do it or street in the free world we call it. In prison, when you took a piss in a toilet, there's no toilet seat. You know, you lift up the toilet seat and then you pee and then you can sit down, you know, bring it down for the women or whatever. It is. It's a steel toilet. You sit on that steel toilet. And in prison, you literally take a piece of toilet paper, you know, toilet paper, and you clean. And sometimes you wet it or sometimes you put soap on that toilet, the, the, the stainless steel. Today, today, I was took a piss in my own house. The thing is up and I'm wiping the toilet, the, the porcelain part of the toilet. Not for your everyday clean, it just, I mean, I, I, it seems like every time I do it, that's a habit I can't break. I do make my bed every single day. You know, every day I get up and I make my bed, and I don't know how many men who are single and live with their mom 
actually do that. I don't know how many do it, but I do it. So it's kind of weird you brought that up. There are habits you bring in prison. Uh, there's such a habit of me watching who's behind me and noticing who my environment is. It's very hard for me to get comfortable in a place when there's a lot of people, even to this day, after 13 years. And just to let you know, August 24th was my 13 year anniversary of getting out of prison. So yes, that's something that uh, you're right, habits, and you develop them. Obviously, what people don't understand what habits, it takes you uh, two weeks to make a habit. Two weeks. It takes you six months to break it. Try doing something for 12 years. Very hard to break. My friend Paulie and I were just talking about that. And he, we, we have habits. And it's just something that we're going to live with for our, probably the rest of our lives. But it's a great question. Next question. Did male prostitution exist in prison? Wow. Good enough. Great questions today. Uh... I don't know if it was male prostitution, but sex is, is quite common in prison. Uh, male sex is quite common in prison. Yes, do I know of guys in prison who gave blowjobs to other guys for money, for books of stamps, for commissary. Totally knew that. Yes, that happened. Uh, but I don't know if I'd call it just like prostitution. It'd be at the door and anybody go up there and fuck them. Because those guys still wanted to do what they did to somebody. So, you know what I mean? They would deny somebody. It wasn't like a, a, a real, I don't know, how, how do you say scumbag? Somebody who can go in there and just say, give me a blowjob, here's five books of stamps, or two books of stamps, or whatever it is. So, but no. So, you know, that's probably a yes and no answer. Sex happens a lot in prison. And the sad part of also, is rapes happen in prison. And I've heard them, and they're the, they're the saddest thing in the world to hear. And, you know, I always say, I, I know gay friends of mine, and they'll say, man, oh, man, it'd be great to go to prison. All those guys, hot guys, young guys. It's, it's not. There's nothing positive about prison in the sex game. Rape, I don't care who it does. Man on man, man on woman, woman on man, I don't care what it is. Rape is not good, period. It's not a crime of sex. I often talk about that. Rape is a crime of violence. Don't ever forget that. That's very important. And, and, and I take that. You know, I heard it and I seen it and I seen the face and talked to people that it happened to. And I'll tell you what, it, it's traumatic. It, it, it's a traumatic like you wouldn't even, even want to believe. Next question. What was the most shocking thing that changed when you were in jail? The biggest change for me was technology. Totally computers and the internet. When I went to prison, they had what they call a modem. Now, they had the internet, but they didn't have this Google and all this kind of stuff that you can totally know everything in a minute. Hit a button now. You want anything on the internet, just type it in. And I remember when I got out of prison, a guy was telling me, you know, hey, well, hey Lord, you're going to be amazed when you get out. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, you could do anything on the internet. You want it, just type it in. I go, and I just said, what do you mean? Because you want a porno movie? Type it in. You want to watch this, you want to watch, you know, buy this, you can, so I was blown away with technology and even phones, you know, uh, the, the evolution of phones. When I went to prison, I had the old the big gray phone to beat someone. I get out and there, a little thing in your hand and it was amazing what you think, how can these fat fingers touch these little buttons? So yeah, uh, technology for me, a lot of people will say, you know, maybe cars. When I first got out, I thought a Chrysler 300. The Chrysler 300 was a Rolls Royce. When I was on the bus coming home, I saw a Chrysler and I go, I thought it was a Rolls Royce. I thought this guy had a Rolls Royce because you know, the front end was like that. So yeah, that, that blew me away. Totally blew me away. Uh, but me, technology, computers, to be more specific, the internet. The internet more specific like today if you went in today and it depends on how long you go in if you went in today and did 10 years it's gonna be a lot of stuff that changes every 10 years you know in technology we all know everything changes just the way it is next question when instruments were allowed for prisoners did you ever meet any great musicians would they get any respect on the yard oh my god you just hit on a question i loved and i'll tell you why I'm the name him because I never forget. You know my tattoo. I'll never forget. Bobby Yazdamian was a concert 
pianist, and he actually played Carnegie Hall at seven or eight years old. This is a prodigy, a musician who is a prodigy. Well, in the prison I was in at the time, they had a piano, you know, they had a music room and a piano, and also Bobby was, I told you, he was a concert pianist, and to this day, this song breaks my heart every time I hear it. When I hear Sweet Home Alabama, it's C, D, F, and G, the keys, if anybody understands music. I will tell you, Bobby, as Damien, he, he was a funny, he was a big fat guy. He died in prison, so it was very sad when he died for me. No, they don't take care of you health-wise. He was heavy, but he didn't take care of himself, but they don't take care of you either. He died very young. And Bobby went to prison for drugs. Well, Bobby used to sit next to me on the piano when he taught me how to play, and he would go like this. He had that narcolepsy or whatever that's called, where they just fall asleep. I'd knock it off, I'm excited. I asked him to teach me a song. He taught me a song in two days. He taught me Old Ang Syne. That's my piano voice. And then he taught me Sweet Home Alabama. And I noted keys, C, D, F, and G. To this day, those two songs make me cry. They really make my eyes water. Uh, when I hear Sweet Home Alabama, whoever I'm with, I, I tell them, oh my God, that's Bobby's song. And that song hits my heart so much because Bobby was special to me. His dad used to come up with my dad from South Florida. We were in actually Coleman prison at the time. And they would meet and they would come to the prison. They got to know each other because they, and Bobby and I would go out to a visit together with our dads. And uh, it was a very sad day when Bobby died. And uh, you talk about music, Bobby as Damien. And, and yeah, you brought back a lot of memories right there, whoever that was. Thank you very much for that question. Great question. And so those are the two songs, and, and they mean a lot to me. Thank you very much for that one. Next question. How does an inmate find a guard who will supply drugs or other things? Wow, easy question. The first thing guards do to you is they start telling you about their money problems. They'll say, oh man, you know, I couldn't afford the car repairs this month. Oh, geez, you know, things are rough. What do you think that is? That's a telltale sign to the inmate. This one's hot. He needs money. And there was a guard in Atlanta. And at the time, there was a head of the Latin Kings. He was making $10,000 a month in prison, slinging dope, slinging heroin. And it was unbelievable what he did in prison with, with slinging dope. And he had a guard, he was paying a thousand bucks a week to bring in a package. Now the guard thought he was only bringing in weed, but he would bring it right to the cell. But inside the packed weed, there was hard drugs, there was heroin in there, and sometimes other things but it would be a package he would bring. It was set up elaborately, you know, a, a P.O. box was set up where the money would go to a P.O. box that that guard set up and nobody would know anything. And the drugs were put to another spot and the guy would go pick them up, not even know anybody. And then, and that went on for a year that I remember that, I mean, from when I found out about it, I was there until I got transferred, it was still going on. And that was in 99, I left there, 1999, and I was there in 97. So it's amazing, I mean, what goes on and who gets, listen, you're gonna see stuff, bring stuff, you see, it, you know, guards have sex. It was amazing, there was a unit manager in Jessup, Georgia, who, who got caught having sex with an inmate and the, the, the semen stain, the cum stain was on the carpet and the, uh, I don't know who it was, the, the, either the FBI or somebody else, they came in and they cut the sample of that semen stain off of the carpet because there was cum on the carpet. Then when the inmate, inmate ended up either telling on him or whatever, or her, and whatever happened, and this lady was a unit, unit manager, she was very high in a prison, in the administration, and she ends up getting a fire. Her name was Miss Tubbs. How's that? I even know the name. Never forget. 
I do forget, guys, but I'm, I'm, I'm still pretty good. But yeah, it happens all the time, and it's, you know, listen, people are human beings, things happen. So you can't change that, and don't ever forget that. Okay, the oldest person you've seen in prison. Wow. Uh, most of the really, really old people end up going to a medical facility. Uh, and they had one in Marion. They had one also in North Kibutna, North Carolina. Uh, I was in a prison with an 87-year-old man. I think he was 87 because I remember a birthday. Uh, but you'd see him. They don't give a shit. They'll see a 90-year-old man in prison. Uh, but most of the older guys end up going to a, a medical facility because there's something wrong with them. Uh, you know, those are the ones that said, you know, I, I saw an old guy who was in prison. He used to come to mail call every day and nobody ever wrote him. And he wasn't a murderer. He wasn't a rapist. He wasn't a scumbag. He ended up doing some bullshit with, I think he was an old time bank robber, old time armor car robber. And the poor guy was the saddest case in there because nobody ever wrote him. And he just, he'd shuffle up to the mail call and nobody would ever give him anything. It's a, that, that breaks your heart, man. I don't care who you are. I have a heart for people. And, you know, uh, it's just cruel. To me, it's very cruel. Okay. What was it like your first time in the hole? Hmm. You know, my first time in the hole, I was still new in the prison system, so I was shocked. Uh, and... And matter of fact, the, the really, I mean, you get in the hole and you go kind of in the holes when you go from prison to prison, depending on the charges. I had the hard charges. Uh, but my really first time with a bad experience in a hole or a crazy experience in a hole was Lewisburg, Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. I was in the holdover. And that's where they, they called it the gauntlet. You're in the hole and at a little box window and you'd look out the mirrors, the stuff you see and all that shit. And the inmates would douche or or put the gauntlet, the, the warden and the captains and the guards, ha every, every once a week they come around, they come, I, we hated it. They come around and you say, how you doing? How the fuck you think I'm doing? I'm in the hole. Let me out. When am I getting transferred? What's going on? Why am I here so long? Blah, blah. Food sucks. This sucks. Nobody answered my time. Why am I not getting mail? This is a zillion. And they don't give a fuck. They don't get, it's all a dog and pony show we used to call it. So they would come down, and the one time I, I I saw, you know, everybody got ready, and they and they put shit and piss in shampoo bottles. They had shampoo bottles at the time, and they put shit and piss in that and let it ferment for a day. Literally, shit shaken up in piss in a bottle, and a little hole. And when the warden and the whole crew went to the end of the tier, they have to come back. Bang on the door went and everybody started squirting the shit through the things on these people. I'm telling you, it was the most rank smelling shit you ever think. And I'm in the hole. Boy, did we get a beating. I didn't do it, actually. I was one, I was in the cell. I didn't do it. I mean, I was new and I didn't do it, but I was there. I was part of what was going on. They don't give a fuck who you are. A beating time is a beating. And boy, you know, Lewisburg Hole was, you know, a real scummy hole where you go into the shower with five other guys. And, you know, it is what you think. You know, you're watching another guy fucking jack off. You're doing shit. It's, it's just a crazy fucking time. It is what it is. You know, it's called prison. Okay. When you were in prison, did you ever think about doing more robberies once you got out? Mm, you know, in the beginning, I did. First of all, I never thought I was going to get out. That's the truth. I never thought I was going to get out of prison. Just, I didn't. I never thought I would. I thought Larry Lawton was going to get killed in prison or get another charge for killing somebody. Because that happens. Uh, remember, I stabbed two people. I've been stabbed. So, uh, I think about that. And, and I'm lucky as a lucky man. Very lucky to be out here doing this YouTube channel. And I'm so happy I am because I, I feel like I got a family here in YouTube. But in the beginning, you know, you talk about robberies, you think what I could have got away with, you know, should I do another one? You know, I to this day, I know I can get away with a robbery. I hate to say that. I mean, I know every intricacies of a robbery. I'm telling you, my brain works differently. Maybe it's just the criminal brain. Uh, obviously, I will never, ever do another crime. That's just not me. I'm going to help people not do crimes. And I don't want you to think it's a way to do something and get money. Because trust me, 
you're going to jail. And if you think it's a joke, just look, read my book. Read Gangster Redemption. Don't go to prison. And no, so I did think about it, though. Don't anybody kid, they don't think. Everything goes through your mind in prison. Trust me, everything. You know, and what you'll do, what you won't, is a whole different animal. But you will think about crazy shit. Did you meet any innocent people in jail while you were? Yes, I did. Uh, matter of fact, Paul Tolini and I did law cases for people. And listen, I saw some shit in prison that'll blow you away. How the prosecutors are just as much criminals as the criminals. I'm not kidding you. I'm say, talking about holding back evidence, knowing about witnesses that could exonerate somebody and not coming forward with it. And you know, knowing the law so well, a prosecutor's job is not to win at all costs. A prosecutor's job is to seek justice and bring fair, come in fair and seek justice. Whether it's getting that guy off because he's innocent, then that happens. Now, a criminal defense attorney is a whole different thing. A criminal defense attorney can know you're guilty. His job is to go there and defend you the best way he can and, and that the best way in law he can do it. Prosecutor's job is not that. They are not to do that. And they are to uh, uh, seek justice, not seek, seek to just a conviction at all costs. But sadly, prosecutors do. A faulty dog handler, a detective having sex with the witness, and they convicted Bill Dillon, who's a friend of mine. I got to know Bill when I got out and had a radio show. And Bill's been on my show. He's a great guy. He ended up winning some money out of the state, but not even close to what he should have got. And Bill Dillon did 27 years in Florida state prisons for a murder he did not commit. Totally innocent. In fact, he talks about it. He was gang raped his first day in prison. He was a 21-year-old, good-looking, blonde, surfer boy kid. Five guys came in and put a pillowcase over his head and raped him. So you want to talk about, and you're innocent. I often used to think that. I say, man, how, I used to see, man, how fucked up the system was, you know, when I was in and I was abused and I was strapped down naked and beaten. But when you see that and you know you're guilty, you know, there's a party of said, man, I should have never did the crime. And that's the truth. I don't ever, I'm not mad at the system. How would you like to be innocent and that happened. That blows me away. That truly blows me away, everybody. And yes, I have seen it, and it's a very sad thing in prison. Okay, besides chomos, which means child molesters, and snitches, what type of crime will get you beat up or will at least give you a hard time? Sure, uh, if, if we found out that you were abusing an old person, not a chomo or a snitch, an old person. Like, if you were a scumbag criminal. You know, there's a code of conduct in prison, you know. Uh, armed robberies like mine, drug dealers. Uh, we're convicts, you know, people. Man, those guys are trying to make it out there, you know. They, they rob armored cars, they rob banks, you know. They were drug dealers. Well, if you're picking on an old people, and especially, like, punching them in the face, doing shit, and we found out. Someone's going to get mad and think about their own grandfather, mother, and punch you in the face or fuck you up, uh, give you a hard time. Also, of course, any kind of, you know, rapes. Rape is not a great crime. Like, oh, that's a cool crime. You raped someone. Because everybody has sisters. Everybody has a mother. I have daughters. Uh, so there are crimes, you know, we used to call them convict crimes or, you know, guys who were good dudes, stand-up dudes. You know. Hey, listen, Lawton was an armed robber, you know, he was a... Good dude. I know it's crazy. I know what you're probably saying. I always get those in the comments. Because you guys know I do answer comments. Every video I come out and answer comments. I love reading them, guys. So keep them coming. So that's a good question. And yeah, a chomo, child molesters, uh, or uh, snitches. You know, find out you're a snitch. Especially in the, I, when I'm talking about those prisons, I'm talking about the maximum security prisons, the ones I was in. I'm talking fucking warrior place. I'm talking places you don't want to live or go. Period. USP Atlanta. You ask any guard or inmate who ever been in federal or any prison, they know about USP Atlanta. And I was there for a few years. A fucking zoo. Okay. What is the biggest life lesson prison taught you? Hmm. Good question. Prison taught me patience. You know, when you're in the hole and you're fighting the system legally and you're writing something in pencil and you're putting it on a piece of loose leaf and it could be a motion to the court. Put your mail 
through the door. You know, you do your letter, you get a stamp, you can buy stamps off the comma, even in a hole, especially legal mail. And then you put it in an envelope and you literally stuff it through the top of the door so all the mail is sticking out of the door. That's how mail goes in prison. And the guards come along at the night and they pull the mail and they put it in a box. It's not like you can get out of your cell to put it in a mailbox. When you did anything with the mail, there's no computers. Everything's instantaneous today. A lot of you people, young guys, don't even understand what mail was. So you had to learn patience. When you fight a belief you have, whether I fought for prison abuse, I used to write senators and congressmen and, and sue the government, sue the attorney general, sue people to try to stop the abuses going on in prison. So when I did that, it wasn't like I can get an immediate answer. I'm getting an email back. I'm doing a read receipt or any of that kind of shit. No, man. You learn patience. And it, it's, it's something that I use to this day. Uh, whether it's with YouTube or whether it's my business or I learn patience. You know, a lot of times time heals a lot of things too. I tell you people, listen, give it a minute. Don't fucking go crazy. Don't fly off the handle if you're a young person. Give it a minute, sit back, think. And when I mean a minute, I don't mean one minute. I mean, give it a day, give it a few days. Start thinking the process through. The more you think, you're gonna also become smarter and write better. You're gonna get things on you. You used to write things and leave it and then lay it at night and read and write. And it's a whole different document the next day. And it's so much better. So you learn patience. Patience is the biggest thing I've ever learned in prison. Two more. Is it true guards will look the other way if there's a low life like rapist or child molest in prison and let other inmates take care of business? <laughs> I've seen that. Absolutely. I watched a guard actually wrong because they did it to the wrong guy. They actually opened up a door in Atlanta. It was an Atlanta holdover. They, they opened up the wrong door and this guy wasn't a child molester and guards opened up the door and let these other three guys out they were taking a shower, and they opened up his door, and they went in there, and they fucked him up so mad, his eye came out of his socket. His eye was hanging out of his socket. Uh, so sure. Uh, let's just say they won't do it overtly. That was overtly. I don't know. He made a mistake, opened the wrong door. Uh, but what they'll do is, like, they have what they call a radio. You know, they all have radios. Every cop in prison, we call them cops, guards. If there's a fight, the guard ain't jumping right in there. Fuck that, man. He's gonna get himself killed. He hits the deuces. And you, everybody's around watching. They're screaming. And they're kicking. I've seen guys, well, I did it myself. I beat somebody very bad, did certain things. And so I should, shouldn't say, you know, it's just, you know, people. But listen, you don't want to get in a fight in prison because, you know, someone's going, so you're getting hurt. I mean, I got hurt, you get hurt, break your hand, your blood coming on. I mean, it, it's real fighting. It's fucking shit that ain't playing. But anyway, you'll see, a, you know, they know a guy's an asshole or a dickhead or, like you said, a chomo or something bad. They get a little long on hitting that deuces, you know. It ain't hitting him as quick as you think, you know. He doesn't see what's going on and he walks into the middle of the unit and, you know, so... Uh, so yeah, that happens, you know, and it's usually, I hate, you know, it's the good guard. I know I shouldn't say that and Peter will yell at me, you know, uh, I'm for rehabilitation, but there's certain things that are just, just still twist me a little bit. It's just the way I am. You guys know me. Last question, everybody. It's been fun. I know it's a good long video and I hope you're liking it. Uh, without naming names, who was considered the top dog of prisoners in your pen? What exactly made him so respected and or feared? Easy question for me. In Atlanta, I mean, they had the mob. They had mob bosses, which is like the mafia bosses, like John Gotti. But he wasn't even the most feared. The most feared was the Aryan Brotherhood. They are a vicious fucking gang that will cut your fucking head off. So uh, I was in a fight with a guy and I'm hitting him and I'm holding him up so I'm hitting him, I'm hitting him so he don't go down I'm holding him up guy has hair and I nobody ever breaks up a fight in prison I got touched on the shoulder and I turned around and it was a fucking the head of the AB and you know something in my bling clicked don't hit him and he said enough laugh I mean I know him well enough laugh and uh 
I, I went back. I was all fucking hyped up. You know, I mean, God, was I hyped up. And I left, and, and, and he talked to me. He, he was, you don't do that in prison. You don't step in. But he knew the situation, and he had that kind of clout. He was a, that motherfucker had three life sins. Three. I mean, he was one guy that cut a guy's head off with a shank. That's that guy. I mean, think of that. Think of that. With a fucking sharpened piece of metal from the fucking yard. He got a guy's head off. I mean, that, that ain't no joke, man. You think it's a joke in there. I tell people, you know, there's a story I, I, I used to tell about uh, this poor guy. They had three men in a cell. And these two guys with life, they put a guy with 10 years. This is in the papers. And they, he, they put a guy with 10 years in his cell. And they all got drunk in the cell. And the two guys killed the other guy, cut him open, and took his intestines out and put his attest intestines around the door like it was a door frame of a guy and killed him. So, I mean, you can go to prison for 10 years and never get out, man. And that guy had about, I don't know, they said he was close to the door. And uh, talk about fucked up. That's fucked up. And, I, you know, my goal was to keep you guys out of prison and keep anybody. And if you go, try to give you enough knowledge to survive it and maybe come out better. Like, I, I do believe I came out a lot better as a, a, a more level-headed, more man who uh, has my own beliefs, um, a hard worker, and I'm not going back. Uh, I want to help people, but I'm not going to fucking take shit from anybody. I don't believe in... You know, what's going on with cops, you know, I, it, it, they discuss me now more and more. But anyway, that's the questions. I, I, I'm going to cut it off on there. We got a lot of questions, great AMA questions about prison. Uh, I hope you like them. You know you're going to get the straight deal from me. I tell it like it is. That's just what Larry's going to do. It doesn't matter. I don't, you know, I'm not here to 